morning. Another cold day in November. I've got the wrong keys out now. Someone's given me a lawnmower last night to sort out. Just grab these keys. Right. So I've got an, uh, an MTD lawnmower. It's a friend of mine actually. I'm just going to have a look at it for him. And he's had it about 20 years, he said. And he brought it for me. He said it's, it runs okay, but it just won't start. It's got a Tecumseh engine on it as well, which. Uh, I, I don't mind, they work and they always run alright, but the problem with them is you've got to take loads of little fiddly bits off just to uh, just to get it, you know, stripped down to look at the carburetor. So I'm going to get it out of the car, I'm just going to put this little coat on. I always put this on when I come out here, just this old fleece, I'm always wearing the same thing. But um, I'm just going to put this on and I'm going to go get it out of the car, but it's quite heavy actually. It's uh, got a rear roller on it as well, so I'll just put this down, put my coat on and we'll go and get it out of the car. Right, just got it out of the boot of the car actually. Not seen one of these before. It's an MTD 661 for horsepower. It's like it's got a plastic deck. I actually said it's made in Australia as well. Let's see if there's a year on this. So if I look at this service ticket, yeah. Construction 1999, so is that it what? 19 years, nearly 20 years, that's very good. It's a plastic deck, seems to have stood the test of time. Got all this grass box deflector um, needs a bit of looking at. And this pull cord handle. Um, well, that's uh, yeah, that wants starting out, doesn't it? But the problem with these is getting the carburetor off just takes a little bit longer than on most lawnmowers. It's not just there, the air filter's missing off the back of there as well. See if that's come off. That's there, uh, look, that's come off. There's no filter in that. So I'm going to take it in the garden. We'll just try and fire this up and just see how difficult it is to start. If there's anything we can do to uh, get this running a bit easier, I'll probably just service this up as well for him. So obviously this mower's a little bit of a mess, there's kind of a lot of oil and grass and everything collecting around here. Chances are there's a lot under this recoil cover, so I'm going to have to strip this down to get it off. I think to actually get this recoil cover off, I just had a feel around, I think there's actually a screw there, so I'm going to have to split this decal here, take that off. And it could just be clogged up around the ignition coil, but the, the fault he's saying it's got is that when he tries to start it, when he primes it, he never gets any fuel through to the plug. But once it runs, it runs okay, so it could be a, just a, a primer issue, so we could have to service the car better. I'm just going to try and start this up the same way he would, and we'll see what we get. The thing with Tecumseh ones as well, is the primer bulb, it don't really give you any clue as to whether it's working or not. Because like the Briggs & Stratton classic engine, you press it and you can kind of hear it squirt. With this, you're never quite sure if anything's happening at all, it don't give you a clue. Um, so let's just put this up to the top of here. Let's just see what it takes to start it. I really don't like this. Oh, oh. Yeah, so there's just nothing there, is there? So I'm just going to try and face some quick starting and just see if this starts up. So what I like to do is I like to just take this spark plug out. Just pull this lead off. He said he's changed the plug and he's tried all all those sorts of things but I always try myself as well because you just never know this plug looks ancient in here I mean it looks really old oh, that really tight as well yeah that doesn't really look like it's been changed to me so we'll just have a quick look at that I'll show you there take a look at that spark plug it looks quite old it doesn't look too bad I suppose but let's just um, face some quick starting and we'll just see if this starts up so I'll just face some of this in here. The other can I've run out to go back for a different different can. It's a fair bit in there, it's not coming out too well out of that can. I've got something in there. Quickly put this plug back on. And this plug lid back on. Oh, let's try this again. Prime it just for the sake of it as well, but I don't think it's doing anything. absolutely nothing there. This is going to be really difficult to start and I think the best way to do this is actually just to service this carburetor. Let's just put another spark plug in before we do that. Let's try it again. I'll put some quick start in again and I'll put a new plug in as well. I don't think the plug will be causing too many problems because he said it runs okay once it starts so but we'll try it. Once a new one in anyway and I'm going to service it for him so let's just put another plug in there. Let's give it one more go before we start taking parts off. So 
So to strip this down, I'm actually going to remove this cover off the top of here. This is all new to me, I've not done one of these before. But feeling around here, I can kind of feel there is something there. And I don't really like splitting these. If I can, I'll try and lift this up from the corner. And just lift it out of the way and it, hopefully it will go back down, but I'm not sure if it will. I don't really like doing this. Yeah, you can see there's something there. There's actually not a screw hole there, it's actually just an indentation in the plastic. But there is actually one at the front, so we'll just start with that one at the front, push that back down. As a beginner, repairing lawnmowers for profit, this is the type of lawnmower you don't want. As I've shown in previous videos, the Briggs & Stratton 35 Classic and the new 450E and 500E, I could have had the petrol tank and carburetor off by now, but I'm fiddling about trying to get parts off this, but this is the, uh, the screw I've got here. If you see a Tecumseh engine, they do work really well, but they're not ideal for anyone who's starting you know, looking to repair these for profit. So this is the reason, and if you look at all the little parts around this carburetor here, you kind of got to get the exhaust guard off and everything else and unbolt it to get this carburetor off, which isn't ideal. There's probably another way of doing it, but I like to just take everything off. I'm actually going to remove the head on this as well, so it might want decarbonising. I've undone that screw. Let's just get that out of the way. We can see what's going on a little bit better. Now I've got this recoil to take off as well. There's a few different parts on here. It's actually going to involve taking the petrol tank off and the recoil off just to get to this exhaust, get to the head and be able to take everything off. So I think what I might do with this is just lift it on the table. We'll start taking some parts off it. So we're just going to start. I'm going to get some tools out. I've just got them on here. We're going to take this off. I'm going to take these two parts off here. I'm going to have to unbolt this one where the engine oil dipstick goes. I'm going to have to use these as well to drop this tank off the back of here. Then I should be able to remove this starter recoil cover and get a little bit more access to where I want to look at. And just give me access to absolutely everything really. I'm just going to take everything off it. Sometimes it's the quickest way. So I'm going to do this now. I'll just put it on time lapse for that while I remove this recoil cover. But they're the parts I'm going to remove. Just for reference for anyone who's looking. This is where your governor arm is. This is just where the uh, the cables run to. For anyone who's taking it apart sometimes let me just to film these bits. Just to see where everything goes. So pretty straightforward. Governor arm should move about like that as well. Just bring back. So I've taken all these parts off here and I still can't get the recoil off. There's a couple of parts on the back there. Just move this petrol tank out of the way as well. But this is what I'm talking about with Tecumseh. If you're just starting out, I've got everything off and this in theory should lift off. Of course I've got this exhaust guard which is attached somewhere under here and it's probably just a, a screwdriver to take it off but it's just a bit faffy and everything, they try to make it so difficult to gain access to everything so I'm going to undo that as well. It's not really a complaint, it's just I'm showing it for anybody who's just starting doing it just to give them an idea of why I, I always talk about Briggs and Stratton engines and the Honda engines. Just slightly easier to get stripped down and start working on. Yeah this part actually in here, I'm going to have to try and somehow get a spanner on there but can you see right round here? Under there I've got this one off, that was a screw, I just undid this one as a screw, but this one somehow I've got to try and get around the back of this exhaust guard here and get something on there just to take this exhaust guard off just so I can lift the recoil cover off. So the way I've found to get this off, and I know people are probably watching thinking you don't need to take all this off and you don't need to take that off, just take this carb off and get around the back. There's obviously an easy way of doing this, but I like to know how to get things off. It annoy that would annoy me if I didn't take that off, if I didn't know how to get in and take it off, it would annoy me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put, put the socket around the back, just put this through the through. This is when having a good socket set really comes into its own, because without all these little parts, it makes it a little bit more difficult. And I've said before in loads of videos, I have a Halfords 150 piece socket set, and it's fantastic. And recently I've just been updating the website, I think I was saying in the last, uh, the last video is about 16 new articles on there and one of them was just um, I had a good look through really on Amazon just to see what socket sets were available I actually looked at those as well I'm not sure which article it was in now but somebody keeps asking me as well all the time which is the best socket set I could get 
And I'd like to have a good look and see, you know, for what kind of money you could get something decent for. I think I actually put it on the recommended products page. I'm actually building out a recommended products page on there. You can see just under here, I've got another part to get off as well. So I'll do the same thing there. This guard looks really bent as well. I'm not sure if it's supposed to look like that. But I'm just going to remove that one and hopefully that'll be the last remaining one and we can get all this cover off. It's all good fun, I suppose. You learn as you go along, don't you? I'm sure there's easier ways of doing this as well. As I say, I've not done too many of these. And probably for this reason, because I can turn so many round so much more quickly than having to mess about like this. <laughs> so eventually, that's taken me probably about 10 minutes, we've got that off. I can get access to everything I want to see in here. Might just zip this off and have a look at the... Uh, the keyway at the top of there as well. I can get in now, I can get this exhaust off. I want to take all this off, get all this dirt out of here. You see, I like to do this properly, I like to get everything out. And I want access to all down the back of here to clean all this off as well. So, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to bend these little tabs here. You see these little tabs on the exhaust? Just bend them outwards, just poke them outwards with something. And we'll just get a socket on there and we'll take this exhaust off. Let's remove these exhaust but I'm trying to film a bit more as I go along today, just so you can see exactly what I'm doing, rather than just saying I'm going to undo everything. But I want to get on with the job as well because I think it's probably going to take me about an hour to do all this so I'll take that out of the way I and mean, look at the mess in here look at all this dirt around here, I can't possibly leave that like that I'm going to have to cover some of this off this is why really, I've, you know, I've broken my own rule by not cleaning this lawnmower off at least with the horse pipe before I started but I kind of wanted to show you what was in here as well it's a real mess as well, you don't want anything going in there so we've got that out of the way next thing I'm going to do is unbolt all these parts and we'll take this carburetor off I'm just slacking some of these parts. What I want to do now is try and just slide this, this carburetor off here. It's fiddly, you've got to get down the back. There's parts where you can't really get in very well to take off, which I really don't like doing. Everything's just a little bit awkward and a little bit time consuming. I should be able to slide this out of the way. I'm going to disconnect this fuel line in a minute, but I'm going to clamp it off first as well. See, everything's just absolutely covered, can't you? It really wants a good service and a really good clean does this lawnmower. So I've just pulled this fuel line off the end of here. I actually had a little retaining clip here. Just slide that down the pipe. I've pulled the pipe off, I've clamped it in. I'm just going to put a bolt in here now. Just take this petrol tank away from this mower. So with this petrol tank out the way, I just put like a bolt in the end of here. That just stops it all falling out of there. And that's out the way. But for anybody who's taken a Tecumseh carburetor off and I can't remember where everything goes, it's pretty straightforward. But I do like to film these bits, just so you can see. So I've not taken anything off here. And this is where the, all the linkages and springs fit to. This is which way around everything is. This helps a lot of people out. We get a lot of comments saying, I'm so glad because this spring was missing. I'd, I'd hooked this in the wrong way or somehow this had come off. All sorts of reasons. So I'm just going to film around just for a second, just so people can see where everything goes. And of course I can refer back to this, you know, should I forget as well. But in a second, I'm just going to unhook this one linkage here. And I'm going to set this carburetor off this lawnmower. Just taking one linkage out and this whole carburetor's out of the way. I've just watched a really interesting video actually this morning on the uh, Tecumseh carburetors. And I found out on one of the videos that it wouldn't prime if all the bolts weren't back in. It was really quite strange, but it, it showed the priming mechanism and it showed that it wouldn't work until it was back on the engine. I don't know why it wouldn't work, but apparently it didn't. And I, you know, I watched it with my own eyes and saw that it didn't. So what I want to do with this carburetor, once I've serviced it, is make absolutely sure that it's priming correctly. So I would have thought if I primed this with this open you would actually see some fuel coming out because I know there's some fuel in this bolt. I don't actually see anything when I prime this. I don't actually see anything at all. So I'm just going to blow all this off with a compressor and then we'll have a look inside this carburetor and see if we can get this Tecumseh primer working before we put it back on this lawnmower. So I've got this reasonably clean on the outside. What I just want to do now, I can't get it to prime at all. I've tried everything I can think of so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the actual ball off this carburetor and we're going to just take any old fuel out of here we'll have a look at servicing this up I might even have to take this primer bulb off and just see what's behind there as well 
maybe just change this primer bulb. It could be a case that there's some dirt blocking something off at the back. Get the right tool on this. So all sorts of different sizes. I've tried everything today. I've had metric, imperial, a lot. Let's just take that off. So I'll just do that. Undo that screw there. I'll take this off, and this should just drop out. You can see there's actually a washer as well. Don't lose that. There's the float. Yeah, and there's a bowl, which has got all sorts of little bits in it, as you can see there. Not too bad, I've seen a lot worse than that. Just keep an eye on this gasket as well. You have to remember as well, this is almost, almost 20 years old. So, it may need a few replacement parts, but it looks like there's a little bit of water in there as well when I've tipped it out. So I've just taken this float ball out here and the needle, everything's there. I want to set this, the back of this air filter off as well, I've just taken that off. I've just put that in there as well. You can see here without taking that off you can't actually get to the back of this carburetor and there's all sorts of little holes in here when you're cleaning the carburetor you want to make sure you get everything blown out. I'm going to clean all this up with carb spray. I'm going to set this main jet out of here as well in a minute. I'm going to clean it all with carb spray and I'm going to give it a really good blow through with an air compressor as well. So it's essentially you take this off the back of here. It's essentially you can get to every point where you want to clean out every hole. Make sure it's all clean and dry before we put this back together. It's got the needle on here and the float ball. All you do is to take that out, I've shown this on loads of videos. Just pull the retaining pin out here. I pulled it out there and I was filming and everything just dropped down, so unfortunately I've missed that. But just take this retaining pin out of here. You can see it just sits in there, it goes across there. And basically the whole float will just drop out with the needle on as well. Pretty straightforward. So take that off the back of there. I'm going to actually just take this main jet out of here as well. I'm going to clean all this out with carb spray and just get any hole I can see clean as well. Really important to do that. To remove the main jet as well, all you need to do is just basically get something soft and just push it down from the top. You probably do it with your finger actually, and it just starts to drop out. You can actually just take it out of here and clean this whole thing off. When I mentioned the YouTube video I'd watched earlier about having all the parts back in, I actually showed you the opposite side of the carb, I'm not sure why. What I'm trying to show is, this part here, apparently if it doesn't have the screw through it, here, this actual primer bulb doesn't work, so if, if I actually blow in here, where this thread's in, I'll show you with my air compressor. If I actually blow in here into this thread, and just keep your eye on the primer bulb here, watch. See how it actually activates the primer bulb. Well, apparently, if this part isn't on here, and you're just trying to get this to prime, and that actually isn't in there, there's a good chance that you won't get any prime out of here. And it just won't work. I didn't know that. A lot of people have uh, watched that video. That just could be a tip. If you're rebuilding something and you're wondering why the primer won't work, just try putting this screw back in here. So if you've got to come say engine and the primer bulb doesn't appear to be working, make sure this part's back in. Because apparently it's essential that that's in to make this primer bulb activate. So to come say, make sure you've got this part in here or the primer bulb won't work. On this lawnmower, this was actually after the air filter. The air filter sits on the back like that, and I've actually taken the whole thing off. I decided to take this off, as I showed you a minute ago, just to show you actually the back of here, so we can get to all the holes. So when I took that off, I've actually cleaned out in here. I've just got some carb spray here. I just use this STP carb spray, and it will do. And I just put something in here, and I just make sure everything's clean and blow it all out. But I thought I'd just mention that. So let's just push this jet back in. You can see this way around. I'm just going to pop that in there. That just pokes back up there, we'll just push that back up there with something. Everything feels quite old on this, it's actually got like a, a little rubber washer on it, it's not in the best condition. I'm just going to push that back up gently with something. I'm just going to refit this air filter housing as well, just tighten that back up. It's amazing to think that having one part missing like that, you wouldn't expect to actually have, you know, part of, partly operate the carburetor can make a difference, but apparently it does. So we'll make sure that that's in there correctly. So I've just dropped the needle in here, you can see here in the float, just drop that in there. Make sure the needle's moving up and down, and just about seeing there. Make sure this needle's moving up and down freely. If this sticks at all, this will actually flood this carburetor, it'll actually flood this bowl, and you'll have petrol everywhere. It's even worse on this machine because it's not a quick and easy job to remove it, as I've shown earlier. So I've just refitted this little rubber washer here that actually sits on there. What I want to try and do with this carburetor is I want to try and put it back together, and I want to connect it back up to the petrol tank while it's not on the lawnmower and see if I can work out if it's priming or not. And I'll also find out if it's leaking before I get it on the mower. I do recommend that's a good idea, which is partly the reason I wanted to remove the complete petrol tank right at the beginning, so pop that in. There's a little hole in the bottom of this part, by the way. Make sure it's really clean, make sure you can see right through it. we will just pop that back in there. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to connect the fuel line up to it. 
So I've just reassembled this carburetor and I want to show you something. This is really important because I've always happy to help people out and show them how primer bulbs work. Now I've cleaned this carburetor and serviced it off. What I want you to notice is I haven't got this part on here. This is where the air filter sat on the back. You see this little hole here. Well, if I press this primer bulb, just watch this little hole here at the bottom. You see this tiny little hole here? Keep your eye on that and see if any fuel comes through here. There's absolutely nothing that comes through that hole to prime this. And of course this won't start. So if you've got a to come say a carburetor that's currently off a lawnmower and you've got this part visited here, be sure to put this part back in here because when you do that, you keep an eye on that same hole there at the bottom. Watch this. You see how we're getting fuel through? And this is what actually primes your lawnmower. So if you're not getting that and you've not got this part fitted or the air filter box and you've got it off and you debt refit this onto something, it could be because this part's missing. So if you've got a Tecumseh lawnmower that won't prime, make sure this part's fitted here. It's absolutely essential you do that. So now I know that this is working okay, I'm going to refit this back onto the lawnmower just to prove a point again while I'm here. I'll just take that screw out. You can see there, there's absolutely nothing. Let's just pop this back in. It's always worth doing this on these Tecumsehs because I don't want to get this back on the lawnmower and not know if it's priming or not. I think that's the initial reason that it's brought it to me anyway because it wouldn't prime with that refitted. We're actually getting some fuel through so I'm happy this carburetor is working correctly. I'm going to dry all that old fuel off and let's refit this back on this lawnmower and test it. So before I refit all this, while I've got all this off, I've just covered this hole here. I'm going to actually take this off the bench. I'm going to clean all this off. I'm going to get all this grass off it. We'll make sure all this is clean and tidy. I might even just have a look in here as well. Make sure there's nothing, any collected dirt in there. I'll probably just clean this ignition coil contacts off. It's a really old design, this really. If you look, there's not actually many magnets for it to connect with, which is, oh, it sounds a bit like Herbie. Um, when it uh, starts, there's only these magnets here. Some of these new Honda ones you see have them nearly right round, they're really good, that's why they start so well. So I think I'll just clean this coil off a bit here, and that might just help. It's got a new plug in. We know we're getting fuel, we know it's priming now. So if I clean this off and connect it back together, in theory I should be able to prime this lawnmower, and it should start up as good as new. Okay, so I've given this a bit of a clean, it's not 100% perfect, but I've got rid of all this grass and all the main bits of dirt around here. So I've just hooked that linkage back up there, hooked this back on the carburetor. I'm just going to slacken these off again. You can see here, I just put these back in so I didn't lose the parts. I'm going to take that on, I'm going to re-bolt this carburetor, make sure the gasket's actually still sitting on here, which it is. If you've not got one there, you'll have trouble with your, uh, your starting your lawnmower and it running properly, make sure the gasket's on. I'm just going to push this on and I'm going to reconnect this carburetor up now. I'm happy that it's clean and it's priming correctly. I've just noticed actually, I've just got this linkage back up and I've just loosely put these two parts through here, just hold everything in the right place. What I like to do is make sure all the linkages move properly, nice and freely as they are there. What I, what I need to do is, I've, I've done it to film this, I'm going to put this back on after, make sure this part's back on. I'm going to get an air filter for this as well and put a proper air filter back on the back of it. All you need to do is connect the linkage, push this together and I'm going to bolt these two parts on here and that carburetor is back on this lawnmower. I'm going to refit this exhaust in a minute and put this back together. One other thing to make absolutely sure of as well is make sure you've got no fuel leaks at all before you put this back together. Connect the fuel line up, make sure there's some fuel in it and make sure it doesn't leak. You don't want to get this back together and just see this awful thing of a drip just dripping continually down there. It's a horrible feeling. And just while this is off as well, I've just cleaned this uh, ignition coil, just the edges of this, just a little bit of a clean. Everything's just a bit rusty on it. I've just given the uh, exhaust a bit of a clean. If you wanted to go around it with a wire wool and whatever, you could really get this quite cool. You know, you could just take, take the time to go across things. I mean, you know, I'm doing this as a favour, but you could go around and make this really quite good. But for what it is, it's not worth it. But I'm going to refit this cover and let's um, see if this lawnmower actually starts. Before I refit this, I've just put a new pull cord handle on here. I didn't like this. Obviously, it's a temporary fix. It's probably been on there a few years. 
but I've just uh, made the end off again, just cut it off, burnt it. I had a spare part in the garage from, so I've put that back through. And the added advantage of that is I can actually get this handle through this cover here, and I can actually fit this without having to fit the cover. I'll just put that back on at the end, otherwise it gets, keeps getting in my way. So now I've got that sorted out. I'm going to put this back on there, so I didn't want it to kick back if it did eventually start and smash my fingers into that. So let's refit this cover. Right, I, uh, I dread filming this bit and I kind of like it. I decided some time ago that anything I've rebuilt and I was going to restart, I would always film as it is because it doesn't always go to plan as you've seen on some of my other videos. So I've rebuilt this. I've got a few of the little bits to put back on, like the exhaust guard properly, but I've connected everything up and I put a plug in it and it's got a bit of fuel in it. So let's try it. And I haven't tried it. I never do now. So anything could happen, but the blade's on all right. I'll check that. I can see when I prime it, I can see fuel slightly coming back, back towards where the air filter should be. And I can actually hear it working a little bit. Um, and now I'm not going to rip my arm off. Let's try this. Wish me luck. Mm. Don't feel too bad to pull over. Let's just give it a bit more fuel. Hopefully that's priming it. I'll be honest I was a bit worried about that I put that back together you know as much as I needed to, to start it and I wasn't overly convinced with myself that it was going to be any better because I didn't really find anything that didn't work apart from I've serviced the carburetor that's all I've done just blowing out them tiny little holes sometimes and just actually visually being able to inspect a part when it's off the mower is always worthwhile well, that fired up great I've just tried that two or three times since as well apologies for the wind it's really windy out here actually today and it's going to get colder so I'm going to put this back on the bench I'm going to put all the correct nuts and bolts back where they should go I'm going to give this a clean up but first of all before I do anything else I'm just going to leave it running for a few minutes I'm just going to drain the oil out of this using my extractor I'll just drain this out all I've got to do is pump it a few times you can see here this extractor is just taking all this oil out of here really simple to do it's really easy to just pull the dipstick out on this all what's just attaching back up here when I finish but a few pumps on this extractor and it's out I'm still using the eBay one by the way I like to alternate just so I've not got both of them full I don't have to go to the tip all the time but you can see this is coming out of here this is all extracting nicely You come to help me film? Yep. Go on then. We're eating Haribos, aren't we? Yep. Oh, sp sure. Spooktastic Haribos? Yeah. Right, you go over Something there. Like that. I'm going to take this blade apart with me and back to all. Yep. Let's see which one reverses. Take the spark plug out when you do this, by the way. There we are. So, using that impact tool, really, really handy to have. I'm just going to sharpen this blade up. I've just written an article actually about having sharp blades and cutting wet grass and how important the angle is to get right on a blade because it provides back lift through the actual chute here and into the box if you, you know thinking of getting into a lawn care business what you really want is a lawn mower that's nice and powerful it really has a sharp blade it has a good back lift and it has an excellent size chute you see here that's only about the size of my hand maybe a little bit big it's not too bad actually but there is an article on the website um, coming up in the next few days about how to cut wet grass because a lot of people do have to do that you know if you're a gardener or you've only got one day a month to go and do someone's grass and it's wet sometimes you just have to get it done but I'm going to sharpen this blade up now for this guy who's giving me this lawnmower it all doesn't look too bad really I'm going to give this a sharpen up do this on my grind down I'm going to put this back on then I've got the oil done I've got the carb done I've got the blade done and kind of a million other little things I've done in between including the pull cord there's just a lot of little things I've even attached that back on there now so actually goes where it should so I'm just going around this more now and giving it a bit of a clean up just to make it presentable again when I give it back because obviously it was a bit of a mess I'm sure if you look at that now compared to when I first picked this up and it was in the car it's, uh, it's a lot better I still need to get an air filter for this but it's all clean and tidy and this I have to say this plastic deck has really stood the test of time this is 20 year old next year and it's very thick tough plastic don't be fooled by thinking the newer ones are unless it's a Honda one the newer ones are very thin 
and the brake very easily as well. It's quite a clever setup this because I don't mind these lawnmowers with rear rollers on the back and no self drive because you still get the nice straight effect when you cut your grass. And then we'll have a look at a few of the little bits. I've just put all these bolts back together but really it's as good as it's going to get and it looks like he's had the handle welded a couple of times there as well but it's a good good little lawnmower this. Now we've got it sorted out. Just wants a good clean up. What's going to do in here? Make it really nice and tidy and I'll give him this back. So that's uh, the end of another video. Let's just fire this up one more time. It's actually cleaned up quite nice as this mower. It's not too bad at all if you consider what it looked like at the beginning. And uh, obviously there's no paint apart from on the handle. And it actually looks quite nice. A few more little bits of cleaning to do. Let's just start this lawnmower up. Let's just check it's running alright. So I've just lifted it up and off this bench. So I've done the blade, I've done the carburetor, I've done the spark plug, cleaned all the fuel lines out as well. I've actually replaced this pull coil handle, cleaned the deck off underneath, adjusted the throttle as well. We need to fit an air filter to this. We've checked all the primer bulb, refitted all these linkages. Basically, this has had a, a full service. But, you know, when it's been fully serviced, you expect it to start reasonably well, so let's see if it does. So if this video has helped you out with your Tecumseh petrol lawnmower, this is an MTD one behind me, 4 horsepower, it's actually fitted with a Tecumseh engine. If I've helped you out, especially if you've got a carburetor that's been taken off a lawnmower and you can't understand why the primer don't work, hit the like button, hit subscribe as well. Thanks for watching, thanks to everybody who subscribed to the channel. I've enjoyed doing this, it's been a good few hours outside this afternoon and I've got this done for a friend of mine I've known for a long time. Hopefully you'll have it for a few more years to come. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you again next time.